The Saravis Major system was first explored in 182 PCU by the Centrum Assembly's Braidwood Expedition. The 15-month expedition consisted of a number of Grafen gate haulers tasked with constructing a return gate under the supervision of the CSV Braidwood, a Trespasser-class second-rate ship of the line, converted for use by the CDF Discovery Service after seeing significant action in the recent Halpern's War. In what was to be his final mission and a swan song for his career, the Braidwood was commanded by post-captain Raphael Colgrove, an older man who had suffered through much of the fiercest fighting of the war, and was briefly under medical supervision for possible post-traumatic stress disorder, but had nevertheless been cleared for continued command of the Braidwood after the war's end. The expedition was largely uneventful at first, with the Braidwood conducting a long and thorough survey of Saravis I and its many moons, while the corporate crews kept a steady pace in assembling the return gate. But the situation changed as the Braidwood moved to Saravis II. In confirmation of existing telescopy, they found the planet possessed a breathable, albeit toxic, atmosphere, and was entirely covered in dense jungle. Despite advice to the contrary from his staff, Captain Colgrove insisted on leading the first shore party himself, and reached the planet's surface by longboat with a small team of marines and researchers at nine bells in the evening on the 133rd of Equinox. Several hours later, while ranging through the jungle, garbled communications received by the Braidwood seemed to suggest the shore party may have come under attack by local fauna, and contact was swiftly lost. After 40 minutes without further contact, a second longboat was deployed to carry out search and rescue operations. Following equipment transponder signals, the SAR team discovered the first shore party strewn dead across a jungle clearing, with only Captain Colgrove left alive and seemingly completely unscathed. The captain offered no explanation as to what had taken place, saying almost nothing to the marines, but motion trackers confirmed the presence of fast-moving local fauna in the area, and the shore party quickly evacuated, sending two of their number to recover and man the first longboat to return it to the Braidwood. Upon his return, Captain Colgrove refused any attempt at medical examination, and once again took command aboard the quarterdeck. Mixed reports were given of several altercations, as the captain reacted with hostility toward further recommendation that he be examined in sickbay, with the chief medical officer seemingly having been confined to the brig after he attempted to force the issue. At four bells in the morning of the 134th of Equinox, having reportedly become calmer and quieter, Captain Colgrove, with no apparent prompting, retrieved a sidearm from the quarterdeck arms locker and began indiscriminately firing into his command staff. The ship's second officer and a nearby yeoman were both killed instantly, with three others wounded before the captain was shot dead by marines. In their logs, several witnesses reported that the captain had screamed as though in terror through his sudden killing spree, interrupted by occasional bursts of incomprehensible rambling, which some reported as mentioning the names of long-dead officers and areas of the Vidara system where the captain had fought actions against Halpern's pirates. Posthumous examination confirmed the presence of an airborne hallucinogen native to Saravis II that was evidently capable of somehow overcoming the high-tech breathing equipment in use by the shore party. The Braidwood's report of this incident led to a quarantine of the newly charted star system, which has remained in place for centuries, with only military and scientific personnel from approved research projects being permitted to deviate from the narrow traffic corridors across the system. The gas giant of Saravis I, which was previously due to be named Colgrove Watch to commemorate the captain and his long career, was instead named Braidwood Watch in an attempt to play down the brutal series of events with which the captain's name was now associated, and to instead commemorate the Braidwood herself for her distinguished military and exploratory service.